So welcome everybody, welcome to um, Energy Play Shop. And today is July the 20th, 2023. The topic for tonight is the Crown Chakra. So we've been doing, since uh, it's, it's been um, six weeks, we've been doing the Root Chakra and then each, each of the different chakras. And then now this is chakra number seven. There are actually um, higher chakras as well. Um, there are chakras that are beyond the body. And um, so <clears throat> within the body, there are seven um, chakras or seven energy centers. So we are gonna talk about that. The, the crown, the seventh one um, this evening. And before we begin, I would like to take everybody into a presence meditation just to stay present. So let's take a deep breath in to breathe in through your nose, breathe in deeply or as deeply as possible. And then breathe out. through your nose and breathe out completely. And then breathe in again. And breathe out. Breathe in again. And breathe out. And continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of elongating your breath as long as it is still comfortable for your body. So honor your body and use your breath to communicate with your body that it is okay to relax. It is okay to breathe in slowly and to breathe out slowly. And let your body know that you're in a safe space. that you are no longer in fight or flight mode. It is okay to relax. So allow your body to relax and really choose to relax your body. Whatever it is that you feel that there are some tension in your body, simply allow it to leave. And you allow the tension to leave simply by giving your body the space to be able to relax. Just breathe into the part of your body that feels tension to give yourself more space to relax. And when you start to feel relaxed, then the next intention is you want to call back all of your energies. You have set and send out your energies and attention outside of yourself. Throughout the day, you've been doing things around the house or outside the house, 
and giving your attention away to things outside of yourself, people, places, and things. And in this moment, call those attention and energies back to you. Just focus inward. And as you breathe in, just bring your attention and your energy back. Wherever your focus is, there you have your energy would go there. So focus within to bring back all of your own attention in and all of your energies in. And also free your mind as well. No need to think of things that are in the past or in the future. Just be in this moment. Allow your mind to only concentrate on things that are here and now in this moment. Anything else, just let it go. as though the last minute did not happen. And the next minute also is not real. Just be in this moment here and now and put all of your energy and attention and intention in this moment. Just pay attention to what that feels like in your body. To be focused on yourself. To be focused on this moment. And remember what that feels like in your body. And when you feel that you're all here, all of your attention, intention, and energy is back to yourself, and then open your eyes, take a deep breath in, and come all the way back into the room. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you, Amy. You're very welcome. So the seventh chakra. From the root, we go to the sacral, solar plexus, the heart, the throat, the third eye, and now the crown chakra. So where is the crown chakra? If you look online, most of the um, website would say that it is at the top of your head. And at one point in time, that is very real. However, um, just would like to make a distinction that um, there are two energies, there's two separate set of energies running in your body. Um, there is the central meridian, which is at the in the in the middle of our body, and then there is uh, the um, Kundalini, which is what the chakras is referring to, or at least what I am referring to when I talk about chakras. Chakras also mean energy centers, 
but it's more a specific name to talk about the energy centers that are on the Kundalini. The Kundalini is the set of energy that brings the energy from the planet, from Earth, from the playground, to, to bring that energy up from the root into our body. So from the root all the way to the crown. And because um, at one point in our history, uh, human history, the Kundalini and the central meridian are the same, or, or they flow in the same um, in the same location. So that's why those other um, some of the older traditions um, uh, talking about yoga and yogic uh, practices, they would say that the crown chakra is the top of the head because at one point it was. And now that's a little bit slightly changed now. The, the crown chakra is really at where the, um, all the bones of your skull comes together. And if you kind of um, feel your own head, you would, you would um, feel that there is one place slightly to the back of your head. That is, there is a little dip there and, um, or a little, um, yeah, kind of, it's, it's not a, a, a big dip, but there is a little indentation there. That's where all the, the bones in your skull actually comes together. And that is where your crown chakra really is. So, and, um, that's why, that's why there's a difference between what I'm talking about and what uh, some of the, the um, other tradition, maybe the location of the crown chakra is slightly off. It's because of that. Um, the, every now and then the um, axis of the earth would start to change. And when that change, it affects our human body. So currently, because of that, the tilting of the, the Earth's axis, um, it affected how our Kundalini energy works. And right now, our Kundalini, when it comes into the root chakra, it, it is not quite in the middle. It's actually towards the, the back of the spine. And um, the only time it is not close to the spine is really the third eye when the, the third eye is actually comes in the, the, towards the, in between your eyebrows. And then the crown chakra, it actually goes back out to the back of your head where the, um, all the, the bones of the skull meets. So that's the location, the crown chakra. But what does the crown chakra actually do? My understanding is that they're actually um, from the spirit point of view, because we are talking about energy centers. So it is really how, um, because we are only one spirit within this body, only one, one spirit. So in a sense, there is only one chakra, only one energy center. But when it gets into the body, because we actually um, want to experience this ourselves in seven different ways. So when we, the, the root, at the root chakra, we experience this physical reality in one way. When that's the sacral chakra, we, it's a different perspective of our human existence of what um, the, the, the spirit and the body is here to co-create. So that's why there are seven chakras. However, the crown chakra is really the culmination of all of the other chakras. And in the end, one day, we will get to the point where there's only one chakra because we actually, there is only one our um, spirituality, there's only one. Right now it's just split into seven different ways so that we can 
understand our human experience. And at some point when we really get to be able to balance both the body and the spirit in a way that we understand all of the different perspective from the root all the way up to the crown, then that's when we actually and we'd be able to let go of any misunderstanding and when all of the um, other chakras are balanced and we are able to easily go from be able to integrate how we think of life from the root chakra's point of view and be able to integrate it all the way up to our crown chakra be able to look at life in the more spiritual, universal spirituality perspective, then when we can integrate all of that into our life, into our um, thinking, then we can actually drop all the other chakras. And in the end, there is just the crown chakra. So that it's a very... Um, <laughs> long about way to say that all is mind and within the body we are given this unique um, way to look at ourselves who we truly are as a spirit from seven different points of view so that really is the significance of the crown chakra, is that it is really the culmination of all of that. And so what is so unique about the crown chakra? Well, what is unique is that the crown chakra is where it's really the gateway. Yes. Question? Okay, maybe not then. Um, so the crown chakra is really about, um, it's a gateway from the body, it's the gateway to the spirit realm, it's the, that is the gateway. So it's also the gateway of um, who we are in this body, playing on this planet, to all the rest, the universe. So it's really our way to understand all of reality that is even beyond earth beyond this planet beyond the the beyond being the human being a human to look at life from universal cosmic consciousness so it is really where um, we get to see the big picture or where we where the um, ideas of big pictures come into this body come into our consciousness so it's really a melding of universal consciousness to the more human consciousness that's that's really the significance of the um, crown chakra is that that is when our crown chakra start to really work and get more aligned and, and open, then we will be able to see the big picture and not be able to just think of ourselves as this little human being. Um, we will be able to actually start to see connections. We'll start to be able to understand um, or start to integrate what we are doing here, how is that affecting the cosmos? How is that being, and also how the cosmos, all of the energy in the stars, how does astrology actually starts? Like the sun, Pluto, or uh, Saturn, which is, uh, those are um, planets of, bodies of planets that's far away from us. How are they affecting us? So, um, it's a symbiotic relationship. We affect them as much as they affect us, only in very different ways. So when we start to work on our crown chakra, we actually are going towards oneness. We are able to see, be able to recognize 
not just black and white, but be able to see that how black and white are really opposite side of the same um, consciousness, good and bad. What is the, the, the purpose of good and what is the purpose of bad? And how are they complementing each other? So that's all of what the crown chakra can start to teach us. And we'll be able to gain, um, grow our consciousness in a way that is more universal rather than personal. And also when we start to move away from thinking of us, uh, of ourselves as just this body, this personality, um, and this lifetime. And we, when we start to gain access into all of the information that's actually stored in just beyond our crown chakra, where we have our Akashic record, on with, which has all of our lifetimes, not just on earth, but wherever we may have been um, to, in other playgrounds, other planets, or even other universes, those information are all stored within our Akashic record. And, and this, the crown chakra is really the gateway to access those information, access who we truly are beyond this space time. So that's all the crown chakras. And um, so I just want to check on my notes to see if I have missed to say anything. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I just want to kind of mention one thing is the crown chakra has been um, associated with two colors. So each of the chakra has been associated with a particular color, uh, root chakra is red. And um, so, and the, the third eye is indigo. So crown chakra is associated with two colors. So there's, uh, there are alternative colors. The first one is violet. So it's kind of like a, a violet is in the purple family. And um, violet is really, it signifies the spiritual intuitive side of life. And the other color is white, which is um, usually associated with purity. So that's why I'm wearing white tonight, um, just to so that I can. Uh, um, fit in with the, 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 the theme of tonight. So this white, why purity? Purity is, it's really being so truth, to understand the truth, not just from Earth's point of view, not just from the root chakras point of view, not just from the heart chakras point of view, but actually from who we truly are, our true self, that is the truth that we are all going towards, is the truth that is beyond space and time. So that is what purity is. The more we seek for truth, not just the truth that we want to experience or the truth that we, that feels good, but actually truth. <laughs> that is something that is beyond just this body or just um, our personality. The truth that is always going to be truth, whether we are in this lifetime or 10 lifetimes ago or 10 lifetimes from now, there are certain things that will still be true. So when we move more into that, um, to look at those universal truths, then that's what the, the white, the color white is. is, is really about the pers pursuit of truth 
of the truth that is beyond space and time. So that's my interpretation of what purity means. And I'm not saying that there's, that is the only interpretation. So that is, so that's what I want to um, talk about as well is crown chakra is, it's about starting to dip into universal truth, starting to dip into universal wisdom that is beyond space and time. And uh, what else did I miss? Okay, so just talk a little bit about how do you know when your um, crown chakra is out of balance? I can, um, I just want to mention that it is usually our crown chakra is, you um, because we are in this body, because we are in a body, so our crown chakra will necessarily, there has, there has to be a reason why we're in a body. Because if we completely has resolved all of our misunderstanding about who we truly are as spirit and as the um, the highest version of ourselves beyond space time, then there's no need for a body anymore. Right now we need a body, otherwise we'll be dead. We won't be able to play here. But when we actually get to the point where we resolved all misunderstanding, there's no need for a body. We can still choose to have a body, but we don't need one. So and it's just to say that as long as we have a body, as long as we need a body in order to be able to be in this dimension to play with our other playmates, then there has to be some imbalance. So when I say balance, balancing the crown chakra, I, I mean relative balance. I don't mean absolute balance because there is no absolutely balancing on crown chakra as long as we are in a human body. And so some of the um, issues that we, that will kind of tip us off that we are in a, well, that we have more than, um, our fair share of imbalance in our crown chakra is if you find that it is, um, you have a lot of mood swings because the, the crown chakra is kind of related to our endocrine system. And, and it is, the endocrine system is um, in charge of our hormones, um, our nervous system. So whenever there is an imbalance, then we the some of the, the, the mental symptoms would be mood swings because when our hormones are off, then you would know that um, yeah, then there is a an imbalance that's more more of a, um, a problem. Or if you, for example, somebody who is, um, has a lot of confusion, they, they kind of get confused easily, or maybe their mind is very slow, they can't really think clearly, or they are easily um, being um, duped into believing in Things that are not logical, so more of a delusional thinking than than um, that's really a mental symptoms of an imbalanced crown chakra, and also things like um, the lack of coordination or any problems in the nervous system or insomnia, then you know that there is a crown chakra 
imbalance. So those are the more physical symptoms. And so that's that's about all I want to say about the, the crown chakra. So any questions, um, comments before we move on to the next step? Not really. Okay, that case. So crown chakra, how do we balance the crown chakra? Because the crown chakra is really the culmination of the other chakras. So this one is a tricky one because you don't, it's really, yes, I think there are particular practices, um, even um, yoga close to balance the, the crown chakra. But in the end, you, the crown chakra does not need to be balanced or that it's the only way to balance the crown chakra is really to balance all the other six chakras. Because when the other six chakras are balanced, then you know your crown chakra would be in line as well. So that is that makes this chakra um, a little more takes more work to, to balance because you don't just work on this one chakra, not like the other chakras, you just work on that. But it is all about, you have to balance all the others. And then you know that you, um, that would be, then your crown chakra would be balanced. So that is one way of looking at it. And then another way to look at it is, um, there is definitely a practice that will facilitate um, balancing your crown chakra. However, that is not an easy practice. Um, the one practice that is going to help to balance your crown chakra is really to move into the observer state. What do I mean by the observer state? Meaning that you do not react to anything that your mind is thinking or that your body is, um, let's say pain in your body. You just observe it rather than getting engaged with it in your mind thinking, oh, this, there's pain there. Does that mean that is my kidney is out of whack or my whatever? <laughs> so you don't think about, you don't ask why. You just observe something and be in the space of just observing without reacting to anything at all. Not um, any thoughts. Even if you're thinking, oh, okay, you know, disaster is going to strike, I don't know, 10 days from now or uh, tomorrow, you don't think about it. You just observe, get into the observer mode. Um, that is one way that you can actually start to align with who you truly are. Who you truly are is really spirit. Spirit is not affected by anything that is physical, anything that is in this world. It is just an observer. It is just here to observe. It's not here to solve problem, not here to experience anything, not here to stay alive because it is eternal. So when you go to that when you're able to get to the point where you can just be the observer and just do that one practice let go of all of your concern let go of your body not let go of everything and just observe the thoughts that comes into your mind you can actually start to let go of um 
your own patterns. If you have any, any kind of patterns that you want to get rid of, actually being the observer is one of the best practice. However, that's not an easy practice to get good at. So So having said all this though, let's, um, let's do a meditation kind of to balance all our chakras to activate the Kundalini and then give us a chance to get to being the observer as well. So 